Hello, welcome to our setup video for the brand new Philips Android television range. The models that this video pertains to are the 43, 50, 55, and 65 PFL 5604 F7 space A or slash F7 space C, as well as the 43, 50, 55, and 65 PFL 5704 backslash F7 space A. There are other videos available for previous year's Android televisions, which will end without an A or a C after the slash F7. In this video, we will complete the full initial setup of a Philips Android television, starting with how to connect the television to the internet. We will demonstrate three different methods for doing so. We will also then add a Google account to the television so that you can take full advantage of the Google Play Store to add applications that you may find desirable. And lastly, we will auto-program the built-in television tuner for those of you that have an antenna connection or a direct to the television cable connection that does not have a cable box. Okay, the first screen that you'll see when you plug in your television and turn it on is the welcome screen. So welcome to setting up your TV. Um, you do have three options for language, either English, Spanish, or French. Obviously, you'll want to select the language that you want all of your menus to be in. In this case, I will pick English. And the first important thing that we need to do with this television is get it connected to the internet. And the second thing is connecting it to a Google account. Now, there is a sort of express lane to this. If you have an Android phone, you can select continue here and just on your Android phone, open the pre-installed Google app and then either type or say, okay, Google set up my device. It will find this television and you will tap Philips 4K television parentheses 675. In my case, your number may be different and it will automatically copy over your wireless settings as well as your Google account information. So that is absolutely the quickest possible way to set up the television. Um, I do not have an Android device, so I am not gonna demonstrate that for you. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the second fastest way to do it. And that is to skip the Android phone step. And at this point, you do connect the television to the internet. So I'm gonna do that here and I will go ahead and type my password out here, but I'll blur it in the video so that you guys can't see it. Once you've typed in your password, you're going to want to move to the right where you see that right arrow pointing to a straight line and select that. That's the enter or return key. If you've typed in your Wi-Fi password correctly, you will see a success notification and your TV will go ahead and connect to the internet and to your network and it will phone home to the Google servers and so forth. Once you're actually on a Wi-Fi network, you're to the second step of the three steps that we indicated were highly significant to setting up your television. Remember the first step was to get on the internet or on a wireless network, which we've done. And the second step is to make sure that you sign up this television with an active Google account. You definitely wanna take advantage of all that a Google account will offer you, they're free. Um, but in terms of getting the most out of this television, with a Google account, you'll be able to install thousands of apps, including apps that are not pre-installed like Amazon Prime Video, Pluto TV, or the Disney Plus Video uh, service. Um, so you definitely want to be able to enjoy all the content that you're paying for on this television. And the only way to do that is to have a Google account that you're signed into so that you can go to the Google Play Store and download the correct apps. At this point, select sign in and you do again have two different options. You can use your remote control, which may take you a while. You'll have to type in your uh, Gmail address, followed by your Gmail password, followed by your two step authentication code. If you have set up two step authentication, um, that takes too long. I don't like doing it that way. So I'm just going to say use my phone or computer. In all honesty, you can use any wireless device that's connected to the same network that this TV is on that has a browser on it. So this would also work with a tablet. If you had a tablet, even though it says computer phone, a tablet would work fine. 
what you'll see on screen is a code that's popped up. And that code is telling you go to the Google site, which we've done here. And on the Google site, you'll see that you have the same exact sort of six blanks. And all you're going to do is type in the code that's on the TV on the web page. So we're going to type 021 followed by 866. And as soon as we type that, it says continue on your other device. And on your other device, what you're going to see is that it pops up with your Google account. I'll blur that out um, in the video so that you can't uh, readily identify me, but uh, you basically sign in to the Google account that it's offering you. If you have multiple Google accounts, pick the one that you want. And as soon as you click sign in on the web page that you're on, the television will go ahead and connect to your Google account and it will show you all the terms and, and, and conditions, etc., that are uh, here. There's a Google Play Store terms of service. There's a privacy policy terms of service and a general terms of service. You can read all of those. Um, in this case, I'm just going to accept them. You're now going to be offered two different options. You can either agree to let Google use your location. For the Google Assistant, this might be helpful if you're looking to do things like you know, hey Google, what concerts are showing tonight near me or what Italian restaurants are nearby? Um, or hey, what's the weather gonna be like tomorrow? Obviously Google would need your location for that kind of stuff. So you can either choose to enable or disable this. I'm gonna go ahead and enable it. And then you can improve Android by sending diagnostic information that's anonymous, but you know, helpful to the Google engineers, or you can choose not to help. It's your choice entirely, I'm just gonna pick yes. Now, at this point, there's a couple of screens that relate to the Google Assistant specifically. The Google Assistant is Google's voice control. Um, on this particular television, you press a button on the remote, you speak into the remote, and the TV does stuff for you. So you continue here. There's a whole different section on services and your privacy. You know, what information are they gathering? What they do with it? Um, you can continue from here. And then personal results, it's up to you whether you want to turn it on or not, but personal results, um, anyone that's using this TV will see. So if you've got it connected to your calendar, connected to your email, connected to things like that, um, make payments, and you're in a household with lots of people and you don't necessarily want everybody to have that information, maybe don't turn it on. I'm just gonna turn it on because, hey, it's my TV and my demo. Um, now you'll see a series of screens that are you know, basic introductions to the TV. Um, we're going to go through this in, a in the next video in more detail. We're going to show you how all these things work anyway, so I'm just going to skip through them quickly. The next screen that pops up is kind of a silly one, but if you're not a retailer and you are using this in a home, just click home. Um, the retail option does like a looping demo with some, you know, pre-selected content. It's basically like a self-selling mechanism that retail stores would use. Uh, we're not a retail store, so we're going to turn that off. However, this screen is an important one. You definitely, I think, are gonna to wanna to take advantage of Chromecast. Chromecast is the Google feature that lets you from any other device that's running certain applications, just cast directly from the device to the television. Um, if you wanted to send a PowerPoint presentation over, or if you wanted to connect um, a tablet, an Android tablet or an Android phone and mirror the screen to the television, or more commonly, if you have an application on your phone and you're searching on your phone and you're like, oh, I wanna watch that video now, let me cast it to my TV, say from Amazon Prime Video or another application, then you definitely wanna turn on Chromecast. So we're just going to turn that on. The third stage to um, installing or setting up this television is going to be channel installation. Now I'll say right here, if you're not connecting an antenna to this television, or if you have a cable box or satellite box, you don't need to do this step, you can skip it. But if you do have an antenna or a cable connection without a cable box, so it's coming out of a wall jack straight into your TV, then you do need to do this step. And I'm gonna go ahead and program the antenna here. And I'm gonna pause the video because this takes just a few minutes to do. And we'll resume the video once all of my channels are programmed. Okay, so we've finished our channel installation. As you can see with this little tabletop antenna I have here in my location, I only have seven channels found. Sucks to be me, 
Hopefully, with your cable connection or your antenna, you'll have a lot more channels. Select Finish. And this is the second part of setting up the Google Assistant that now pops up. Remember, for Google Assistant to work, you're going to push a microphone button on the remote control and speak into the microphone that is in the remote. And the way that your voice gets from the remote to the TV is through a Bluetooth connection. So this is actually Bluetooth pairing of the remote to the TV to enable that feature. You'll press the mic button, which as you can see on the screen is a button that has some colored dots on it. It's right here in the center. And at the same time that you press that, you're gonna press volume down, which is right here. So you press and hold both of those buttons for just a few seconds. And what you will see is if you've done it right, about three to five seconds later, you're basically gonna see it pop up and it's gonna say pairing. And then it's gonna say, um, or connecting, pairing, and then success. And sometimes with my fat fingers, I'm not hitting them at the same time, but there you go. Uh, pairing, and then it should say connecting, and then finally success, or paired. At this point, you have successfully set up your Philips Android television, so congratulations if you've been following along at home. Um, selecting finish here will immediately bring you to the home screen. Um, I'm going to go into a lot of detail on everything that you see on this screen and all of the settings menus and how to configure and customize everything in the next video. Um, but I will just give you a very brief overview here of what you're seeing. In the upper left, this is where you can either click to speak or type if you haven't paired your remote and you don't want to use the remote uh, microphone. You can, of course, just hit the microphone button and speak as well. So that is sort of the search area or the Google Assistant area. Inputs are located here. So if you click on your inputs button, you're going to see all the different inputs that are available on this television, including, importantly, the top one, which is if you've used the tuner inside the TV and auto-programmed in an antenna or a cable, that's how you would easily tune to it. Um, there is also an input button on the remote that does the same thing, but from the home screen, sometimes it's easier to just navigate there. You have an indication of wireless connectivity. Yes, you're connected. Hooray. Um, and then all of your settings are located underneath that little gear-shaped uh, icon that's conveniently labeled settings. And then the layout of the rest of the screen is basically a favorite app row. These are all the favorite apps, or since we've just set this TV up, it's the pre-installed apps. As you add apps from the Google Play Store, you can designate them to be on this top line as one of your favorites. You can also hide or get rid of uh, any of these, and we'll detail that in a future video. And then each uh, key app, a lot of the apps will have their own row showing you personalized content to the right. So in this case, Netflix is showing you things that it thinks you might be interested in. Since I haven't signed into a Netflix account, these are not personalized yet. But if you sign into your Netflix account, you'll see personalized recommendations there. And then you have your YouTube recommended, your Google Play Store recommended. And this is a very useful area if you're quickly looking to add apps because these are the most popular apps and they're right there to click on and install. Okay, the very last thing that you should do after your initial setup is name your television. And it's going to kind of remind you to do that. If you click on settings right at the very top, there is a suggestion to set your device name. This is important because this is the name that your TV will use to identify itself for casting. So if you're in any kind of a, an application on your phone or a tablet that has uh, support for Google Cast, when it pulls up the list of devices, this is the name that this TV will identify itself by. You can click there, and there are some pre-defined ones. A lot of people like to name it based on the location so that you know you're casting to the living room TV as opposed to the bedroom TV, etc. Um, you can also use a custom name if you prefer. You know, you can just name the TV Fred. Um, it doesn't really matter what you name it. Just know that whatever you do name the TV, that is how it will identify itself on the network when you are casting to it. So a good idea to do that right now, now that you've just completed initial setup. And that's it. You can begin enjoying your television and 
Come back for the third video in this series where we're going to go into a lot more detail on all of the other settings and how the screen lays out and what all the different options are for customizing it, adding apps, deleting apps, etc. So look forward to seeing you in our third video.